radians and the unit circle. So what if we had a temperature in degrees Celsius? How else could we write this? We could also write it in Fahrenheit, so we could have degrees Fahrenheit. And what if we had centimeters? Well, we could also write that in meters or inches. What if we had a liquid measured in liters? Well, we could also write this in cups or gallons. These are called units, and they're all defined differently. They all mean different things, but they all express the same thing. For these three, it is volume. For these, it is length. And for these, it is temperature. The same goes for angles. If we have an angle written in degrees, we can also write this in terms of radians. So a radian is defined as the angle at the center of a circle whose arc is equal in length to the radius. So what does that actually mean? So we need the an arc whose length is the radius. So we would take the radius, which I've drawn here in pink, and I'll label as R, and we would draw an arc equal in length to that. So if I had just drawn an arc kind of like this, and let's say that line is equal to our radius, uh, one radian would be equal to, if we draw a line there, one radian will be equal to this angle here. So this angle would be measured as one radian. So how many radians are in a circle? Because we know there's 360 degrees in a circle. So how many radians is there in one circle? Well, if we're measuring in arc length, then what would be the arc length of an entire circle? Well, it would be the circumference. So let's write that. Our circumference is going to be equal to 2 pi r. So if we know that 2 pi r is equal to the length around the entire circle, and the length of the radius would be 1 radian, then we can just divide by r here to get the number of radians in a circle. So we just cancel that out. The number of radians in a circle is 2 pi. So there's 2 pi radians in one circle. So now let's get that conversion factor. So we now know that there is 2 pi radians in a circle. And we also know that there is 360 degrees in a circle. So if we divide 2 pi by 360, we will get our conversion factor. So if we just divide the top and bottom of this fraction by 2, we will get pi we will get pi radians is equal to is equal to 180 degrees. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So I'm going to scroll over a little bit so I can demonstrate this conversion factor in use and how you would actually use it. So let's say we are given an angle we are given pi over 3 radians, and we're asked to convert it to degrees. Well, this is in radians, so we need to somehow cancel the radians to end up in degrees. So we wouldn't multiply by pi over 180, we would instead multiply by 180 over pi. Scroll over it just a little more. So that way, our radians will cancel and we'll be left with degrees. So we'll also have a pi in the numerator here and a pi in the denominator here, so we can just cancel those as well. And so we'll be left with 180 divided by 3, and that's going to be equal to 60. So our answer would be 60 degrees. So pi over 3 radians is equal to 60 degrees. Let's do another one, but this time from degrees to radians. 
if we have 45 degrees, and we need to convert that to radians, then we would use our conversion factor pi over 180. So that way our degrees will cancel and we'll be left with radians. So let's write that. Pi over 180 degrees. Pi radians. So we have a pi here, and we're, our answer is going to be in terms of pi. But what is 45 divided by 180? Well, we know 45 is 5 times 9, and we know 180 is 20 times 9. So we can get rid of our 9s, and we'll have 5 over 20. And we can divide both of those by 5, and we'll be left with 1 fourth. So this is going to be 1 fourth times pi, which is just equal to pi over 4. Let's bring back this circle, and let's try to fill in more of the values. So we know this is 2 pi, and we know 180 is equal to pi. So what would 90 degrees be equal to? We'll be in between 0 and pi. So it would be pi over 2. And then for this value here, what's in between 1 and 2? Well, it's just 1.5, and we'd write that as 3 over 2. So we'd have 3 pi over 2. And then what about this angle here, this 45 degree angle? Well, we already went over that. We know this is going to be pi over 4. And we already figured out that 60 degrees is going to be pi over 3, but what about 30 degrees? Let's not use the conversion formula, and let's just think about it. If we know that pi over 2 is equal to 90 degrees, 30 is one third of 90, so we just need one third of pi over 2. So pi over 2 multiplied by 1 over 3 we just do 2 times 3 is 6, pi times 1 is pi, so it would be pi over 6. So this would be pi over 6 radians. So let me just sum in the full unit circle real quick. So this is what the full unit circle looks like. It has all of the main angles that you're going to need in degrees and radians, but usually in radians, and it has a coordinate for each of the points on the circle. And the unit circle has a radius of 1. And because of that, each of these points, each of these uh, coordinates, is actually equal to one of the trigonomic functions. So let's look at sine of theta. And sine of theta is actually going to be equal on the unit circle to our y coordinate. So sine theta is going to be equal to y. And what about cosine theta? Well, cosine theta is going to be equal to our x coordinate. And finally, we have tangent of theta. And we know tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So our tangent here is going to be equal to y over x, because that would be sine over cosine. So you can use the unit circle to evaluate your the exact values of the trigonomic functions. As you can see, some of these have like square root of 2, square root of 3, and so evaluating this by just throwing in your calculator is not always going to give you a co correct answer, because sometimes you need it to be exact and that's where the unit circle comes in handy. However, if you do throw this into your calculator, make sure your calculator is calculating for the correct unit, because if your calculator is in degrees, and you, and you enter in a value in radians, your answer is going to be completely wrong. Similar to if you tried to cook food in a Celsius oven and set it to 350, your food would not turn out how it's supposed to. And that's it for radians and the unit circle.